What if I told you imposter syndrome is not real? You know, when you encounter a new problem or try something new and you feel like maybe coding isn't for me. I recently started my one-on-one -on -one mentorship program again. And one thing I've noticed with so many people is that they feel like they can't do it and want to give up learning how to code. How come? Because they often feel like they're just not good enough. You suck. You suck. But what if I told you that you are more than good enough? Please welcome the amazing me. And that the problem could be that you're simply learning how to code the wrong way. So then this got me thinking, why not make this video? But not only that, you're not going to believe how simple the solution to imposter syndrome is. So let's get started. So more often than not, you will feel imposter syndrome when you encounter a problem you've never solved before. And in result, the first thing you tend to think is, oh my gosh, I'm going to be exposed that I'm not a real developer. Okay, now let me be the first to tell you, no, you're wrong. You don't know me. Believe it or not, but this problem that you're going through right now is what will make you a real developer in the first place. Wait, what? How? I'm glad you asked. So again, what makes you a good developer is by encountering problems you've never solved before. Because if you only encounter problems that you know how to solve, you will never improve. Meaning the more problems that you end up encountering and solving, the better you become. But the less problems you encounter, the less problems you end up solving, the average you remain, if not below average, right? This is not your average reality show. My definition of a good developer is when someone is faced with a problem they've never encountered before, rather than shrieking and hiding behind their laptop, they take the problem head on. Now, I'm telling you, every developer has felt what you're feeling at this very moment. But the question is, how would you overcome it? I remember the very first moment I felt imposter syndrome many, many years ago. I panicked and I became too scared to ask for help. And in result, it took me longer to find a solution to the problem and it took me longer to complete that ticket. And unfortunately, there are times I got in trouble because of it. So by letting imposter syndrome take over, made me look worse in the end. Now check this out. This is what Lawrence, who became a software engineer at 46 years old, had to say about this. You know, sometimes there's behaviors that are happening that we call imposter syndrome that are not. I could say I have imposter syndrome about that, but the fact is I just don't know how to do it. And I can use that as a signal to say, this is something I can learn, I can put time in, I can practice, I can come back to it later. It might not make sense, but eventually I will grasp this thing. So there's no need for me to be intimidated about it or think it's just gonna be impossible. It might take me longer because it's not something I'm familiar with or age or whatever other number of factors, because we all have factors, right? Whenever I deal with people, well, I'm this and I'm that, okay? I respect that and, are you willing to do what it takes to get to where you want to go? I love this line. You have to do whatever it takes to get to where you want to go. I choose to make my own faith. When you don't know something, it does not mean you're underqualified. What it simply means is that you don't understand a particular subject and now you got to do what it takes to actually understand it. Now, the next thing I want to talk about is this. People are not retaining code well enough because they are not learning how to code the wrong way. What do I mean by this? And that was definitely the case for me learning to code. Everything, you asked me what part, everything was hard. Every concept, especially when I got to JavaScript, that was hard. Then trying to make my own project from scratch, that was hard because I did so much just watching the tutorial and coding. Hey, instead of just watching the tutorial and coding, watch it, code it, and then turn the tutorial off and make sure you can do it in a blank editor. It took me like a year and a half to figure that out because I had never done it and couldn't figure out why I couldn't retain anything. I don't have a bad memory. Like, why can't I retain? It's because I wasn't retaining anything. I wasn't doing anything to retain it. I was just, all right, next you're going to type script. Okay, script. I would just type along. That's not learning, right? That's like monkey see, monkey do. The learning part is after you've done that to turn the tutorial off and see how much did I remember. So if it's some new concept, you just learned how to do a switch statement. After you learn it for the first time and you code along with the tutorial, then you have to go back and code it on your, on your own. If you can do it all, great. If you can't, wherever you get stuck, that's where you go back to the tutorial and learn just that part again. Then you go back to your blank editor, make sure you can do it. I did not do that at first. So I'm still on your question, what was hard? The hard part was just retaining and figuring out 
what do I need to do in order to retain this material so I can reproduce it on a job so I can convince some job somewhere to trust me with their code. I love what Lawrence said here. So what Lawrence is talking about is that the mistake that so many people make when learning how to code is that they depend way too much on tutorials. I can attest to this, this was me too, where when I was still learning how to code on my first job in tech, that I would literally search through the tutorials from Udemy that I was using from zero to mastery that I was using, thinking that everything I need to know for the job would be in these tutorials, but they were never in the tutorials. Well, most of the time they weren't in the tutorials. But what did I need to do instead is to learn to stop depending on tutorials, video tutorials to learn how to code, but be better at reading. Be better at using something called documentation. Do you realize how many people I argue with, argue with that, I don't read, I'm just doing videos, I don't like reading. And I'm like, I understand that and respect that, but please understand there's a certain type of learning that happens when you read that doesn't happen in any other way. There, there's nothing that can replace reading. And once you get on the job, it's all documentation because there's not gonna be videos for all that, for all that source code. There's docs, hopefully there's docs. And if you're the new person to this new docs, you'll probably have to write docs. Now, how are you gonna write documentation and you don't read documentation? Why is documentation so important? Because that is literally what you will do on the job. A lot of times, when you're building something for work, when you're building something for your first job, you will not go back to tutorial to learn something. More often than not, you will go to Google, you'll go to Stack Overflow, and you'll read documentation to try to learn how to build the thing that you need to build to get the job done. If you don't do this now, you will have to do it later. Learn to go through that right now. As much as I hate reading with someone dyslexia, I to this day still use documentation to learn new things. I rarely use tutorials now. Are tutorials bad? No, they're great when learning something for the first time, but do not become dependent and get into tutorial hell. That is how you learn how to code, how you can overcome tutorial hell, imposter syndrome, and become the best developer that you can be. Anyway, hope y'all liked this video. I'll see y'all in the next one. Peace.